Chapter 36. The Dream. The work went on without stopping. Some patients needed urgent care. A few unbalanced individuals are full attention. By evening, I had fully learned the technique of magnetic passes, which I applied to the patients who were in need of them. In the morning, Tobias returned to the chambers, and, more out of kindness than for any other reason, he encouraged me with words of praise. Very well done, Andre, he exclaimed with satisfaction. I'm going to mention you specifically to Minister Genicio, so that you can receive double hour bonuses for your first time on the job. I was about to say how grateful I was when Laura and Lysias arrived and embraced me. We are very pleased, the benevolent woman said with a smile. I followed you in spirit throughout the night, and your first time at work brought great joy to our domestic circle. I had the pleasure of passing the good news on to Minister Clarencio, who asked me to send you his congratulations. They exchanged pleasantries with Tobias and Narcissa, and then asked me about my impressions. I was all too happy to oblige. My greatest joy, however, was still to come. Besides Laura's kind invitation to return home with them to rest, Tobias also offered me a resting room beside the chambers of rectification, to which he advised me to retire without delay. In fact, I felt an urgent need to sleep. Narcissa made me a bed with the love of a sister. Alone in the spacious and comfortable room, I prayed to the Lord of life, thanking him for the blessing of having been useful. The blessed fatigue of those who have fulfilled their duties left me no time for further musings. Within a few moments, a sensation of lightness filled my whole soul, and I had the impression of being carried away in a small boat toward regions unknown. Where was I being taken? It was impossible to tell. A man sat silent beside me at the helm. I felt like a child, unable either to count or to describe the wonders along the way. I let myself be carried along without a word, amazed at the magnificence of the landscape. The little craft seemed to be sailing rapidly, even though it appeared to be ascending. After a few minutes, I was in a marvelous harbor, and somebody was calling to me in a familiar voice. Andre! Andre! I hastily got out of the boat like a child. I could tell that voice from a thousand others. A moment later, I was overwhelmed with joy in my mother's arms. She led me to a wonderful wooded area where the flowers had a remarkable gift. They could retain light, offering a permanent feast of fragrance and color. Luminous golden tapestries stretched out under the rustling foliage of the great trees. My feeling of happiness and peace were ineffable. The dream was somehow different from those I had experienced on earth, I was perfectly aware that I had left my denser body in the resting room beside the chambers of rectification in Nasalar, and was completely aware that I was moving in a different sphere. My notions of time and space were accurate. The wealth of emotions that I was experiencing was growing more and more intense. My mother spoke a few words of sacred spiritual encouragement and then explained kindly, I prayed to Jesus that I might be granted the sublime satisfaction of having you by my side after your first day of useful service. As you can see by now, my son, work is a divine tonic for the heart. When many spirits leave the earth, they linger unproductively and wait for miracles that never occur. Thus their great potential is reduced to displays of parasitism. Some offer the excuse that they are discouraged because they are lonely. Others state that they cannot adjust to the environment in which they were called to serve the Lord. But Andre, it is indispensable that we convert every opportunity in the spirit life into a reason to remember God and serve him. In the lower spheres, a bowl of soup given to the hungry, some balm offered to a leper, or a gesture of sympathy directed towards a disenchanted person are sublime deeds that are remembered forever in the house of our Father. Here, a look of understanding cast to the sinner, a promise from the gospel brought to those in despair, or a bit of hope given to the afflicted are blessings of spiritual work that also weigh greatly in our favor. My mother's expressions were ever so beautiful. Her maternal eyes seemed to radiate sublime light. 
her hands in tender gestures transmitted invigorating fluids and gentle emotions to me the gospel of jesus my dear andre she continued kindly reminds us that there is greater joy in giving than in receiving let us learn how to put such a principle into practice in the daily efforts necessary for our own happiness always give my son above all never forget to give of yourself in constructive tolerance fraternal love and divine understanding the outward practice of goodness is a lesson and an appeal enabling us to experience inward goodness jesus gave more of himself to the improvement of humankind than all the noble charitable donations by all the millionaires on earth put together don't be ashamed to help the ulcerated patients or to clear the minds of the mental cases that enter the chambers of rectification where by the way i followed your work last night in spirit work my son in all our spirit colonies as on the spheres of the planet there is an overabundance of restless souls anxious for novelty and distraction but forget about entertainment and look for useful service instead i am very insignificant but can nevertheless watch you in spirit as you work in nasolar and i can follow the sufferings of your father in the regions of the umbral likewise god sees and accompanies us all from the most enlightened ambassador of his goodness to the lowest beings on the scale of creation lower than the worms of earth she made a short pause and i wanted to take the opportunity to say something but couldn't tears of emotion kept me from speaking she looked at me tenderly understanding my situation then she continued here as in the majority of spirit colonies payment for work is done with our bonuses such payment unites two essential factors the bonus represents the possibility of receiving something from our brothers and sisters in struggle or of giving something to someone who takes part in our accomplishments but the criteria for determining the value of the hour bonus belongs exclusively to god like on earth in awarding hour bonuses there can be many mistakes due to our fallible personality and our nature as evolved creatures however as for the spiritual content of the hour bonus there is a direct connection between the worker and the divine forces of creation that's why our experimental activities during our progressive march up from the physical sphere undergo continuous modifications every day tables registers and payments are modalities of experimentation used by the administrators to whom the lord has granted the opportunity of cooperating in the divine works of life just as he grants his creatures the privilege of being fathers or mothers for a certain amount of time on earth or on other worlds sincere administrators all do their utmost to carry out the duties assigned to them every conscious father is full of devoted love god also is an attentive administrator and an extremely devoted father he forgets no one and reserves his right to make an agreement with his workers concerning the true use of their work time all outward payment affects the personality undergoing the experience but the entire value of time is important to the eternal personality the one that will always remain in our circles of life on its way towards the glory of god this is why the most high gives wisdom to those who spend their time learning and more life and joy to those who know how to deny themselves my mother stopped talking while i dried my eyes then she took me in her arms and fondly stroked my face like a boy who falls asleep after a lesson i lost consciousness and awoke later in the chambers of rectification experiencing an invigorating feeling of joy